Good afternoon and hello everybody. My name is Melvin Tan. I'm very happy to welcome you to Art and Life Resonates With, which is a monthly program responding to the themes of the permanent and special exhibitions at the National Gallery in Singapore, bringing to life the collections at the gallery and exhibitions through music inspired by these paintings. I know that this year has been a particularly difficult one for everyone. I myself do not know anybody who has not been affected by this terrible COVID crisis. But fortunately, with digital resources, I'm able to take you today on a, a, a short musical journey based on some of the paintings that I've chosen from the National Gallery's collection. The paintings I've chosen today are portraits of various kings and queens, and the theme is entitled Art and Power. The first of these paintings that I have chosen is a 19th century portrait of King Nanklao of Siam. When I saw this portrait, I immediately thought of the wonderful sound world of both ancient and modern Asian instruments. And they kind of evoke a dreamlike, wonderful dreamlike quality um, in the music. Now, these instruments were not really known in the West until the turn of the 20th century, when composers like Debussy heard them in Paris for the first time. Debussy was so enamoured of this sound world and of these instruments that he later incorporated a very kind of Asian-like language into his musical compositions. One of them you're going to hear now is very much in this, in this mould, if you like, and it's called Pagode, Pagodes.
My next piece, again by Debussy, is a highly atmospheric piece, a prelude, called La Terrasse des Audiences du Clair de Lune, The Terrace of the Listeners in the Moonlight. This is inspired by a portrait of King George V. This piece was long thought to be a representation of the famous Delhi Durba of 1911, when King George V himself was installed as Emperor of India in the last such extravagant display of British colonial power. But in fact, Debussy, the composer who wrote the piece, had read in a magazine the evocative description of a visit to India by the French poet René Poe. As well as seeing most of the famous sites, he also visited an abandoned palace near Jaipur, which has lain silent for almost two centuries. The writer describes a succession of perfectly preserved ceremonial rooms, including the Hall of Victory, the Gardens of the Sultans, the Hall of Pleasure, the Corridor of the Queens, and most importantly, the piece's title, The Terrace of Moonlight Audiences. This prelude is a highly atmospheric piece that depicts um, the heat of India, the, and it's one of his most wonderful preludes.
My next piece is by Beethoven, the first movement from the sonata in E flat entitled Les Adieux. It is not so much based on one particular portrait from the pictures that I've selected today, but as more as it's a general group of music and power, the theme of music and power. The sonata Les Adieux or Farewell was published in 1811 about the same year that a large group of Malays moved to Singapore from Johor to join the existing early settlers. Only a few years later, of course, Sir Stanford Raffles arrived in Singapore and the rest is history. Back in Vienna around that time, Napoleon's Imperial Army had invaded the city, causing Beethoven to take shelter in a cellar protecting his already failing hearing, his fragile ears from the deafening sounds of the guns with a pillow. The attack on Vienna had forced the Archduke Rudolf to leave the city for his own safety, inspiring Beethoven to create this touching tribute to his longtime patron, hence the name Les Adieux Farewell. The the movement that you will hear now is only the first movement and it's very much um, based on the word farewell, labour vol, and you will hear it again and again throughout the movement. So here is Beethoven's Les Adieux, first movement, farewell.
My next piece is by Ravel and it's again inspired by the portrait of King George V and it refers to King George V and the First World War. Ravel wrote Le Tombeau de Couperin, which can be translated as the Tomb of Couperin, just after the First World War, where he very much wanted to be involved in. He was really wanted to fight in the war, but thankfully for us musicians, he didn't because he was very delicate. He was a very delicate physique. So all he got to do was to drive a supply truck around the battlefields of Verdun. Lucky us. The Tombeau de Coupra is a homage to the music of François Couperin of the French Baroque period, which is nearly 150, 200 years earlier. Very elegant dancers and beautifully constructed, but always very, very elegant. But with Ravel, he dedicated each of the, move, of, of the movements to a friend who was killed in this terrible, terrible war. So each movement has the dedicatee of somebody who was killed during the First World War. The piece was first performed in 1919, just after the First World War. And the Follen is, was one of Francois Couperin's sort of favorite court dancers. This particular movement was dedicated to a friend of Ravel's called the Lieutenant Gabriel de Luc, who was a talented painter and who came from the south of France. One thing that you will notice also in the Follin is the advent of jazz. There are lots of very beautiful jazzy chords in the movement, which is really wonderful to play as all Ravel is wonderful to play, but this is particularly enjoyable to play. So enjoy it.
I hope you've enjoyed the performance today and the selection of music inspired by the paintings and artwork currently exhibited at the UOB Southeast Asia Gallery at the National Gallery in Singapore. I do encourage you to go in person and visit for yourself this exhibition. If you are unable to do so, you can always visit online at the gallery's own website. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm sending you my very best wishes. Thank you. Goodbye.